Greetings everyone! Welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. So I, yes, am still on this quest with this project that I am adoring. It's so much fun. I hope that you guys try it. Um, if you would like for me to make a book for you, you can email me. My contact information is down below in the description of this video as well as on the About tab of the channel. Also down below, you will find discount codes. Please sign up for Roikaten using the code that I have below because you will automatically receive cash back just for signing up. And all you have to do is have an email address. You don't need anything fancy, no personal information. It's a done deal. And also, down below you will find other information that I hope you find useful. Also, if you have any questions, remember to put them down below in the comments. Our contest, I don't know what to really call it, it's a giveaway. So our giveaway um, is going to be from now, so it's still continuing, until August 10th, 2021. So the way it works is all you have to do is leave a comment, be a subscriber of this channel, and click the thumbs up. It's that simple. And every single time you leave a comment and give us a thumbs up, and if you already gave us a thumbs up and you're trying to give us multiple thumbs up on a video, that won't work. But you can leave multiple comments and, of course, be a subscriber. And every single time you do that, that is an entry into our giveaway. And I am giving away two of these journals. The journals that I give away, we will have videos on so that you could see what they look like. So they won't be necessarily any of those, that, like for example, this is not one of those um, books that will be given away. So one of the things we were asking is, when I say we, I'm usually talking about myself and my husband have had a conversation. But one of the things that we were talking about is like what to call these. They're not really junk journals. They're definitely not scrapbooks. They're not, you know, obviously like photograph albums or anything like that. Um, they're not notebooks, but they're like a combination of many things. So I kind of thought that using the word lookbook journal might actually be what we could call these. So if you have any ideas, it's a good way to get your comment in because leave a comment down below with what your suggestions are. So the whole idea of this video in particular is simply to flip through this journal and show you, listen, I'm calling it a journal, a lookbook. I don't know what to call these, but for you to, you know, for me to flip through them, for you to have a tour of what's in this one and in some cases why. This is actually a personal one. So I am, this one I actually made for myself. And one of the things I was doing was going through um, some of our like achievement things. My husband was in the military, so we have like stuff from that. We have um, accommodations, different things that we were given um, for extra service from our jobs, um, our educational stuff, etc. There we had like, and the good thing is everything was contained in a large chest of drawers as well as part of a closet in a couple bins. So I was going through those three little areas, if you will, and what I wanted to do, and I've been wanting to do actually for a while, is just weed through all of that stuff and at least get it in order by category. And as I was doing that, I was like, you know what, what I can do with some of this stuff is the same thing I did with the button journal lookbook is sort of take some of it and put it into themes and into and create these books. So one of the things that I had and I've had like since I was a teenager because I was one of those kids um, was a love for music and 
and I was very particular about the artist. <laughs> um, and this is one artist in particular I adore to this day. May he rest in wherever he is. If you believe in heaven, then that's hopefully where he is. Um, and it's the artist known as Prince, um, Prince Rogers Nelson, a.k.a. Prince. And so this book, you will see a bit of a theme in here because of him, but the book is actually meant to be used in any way that one would want to use it. I am going to use it to make notes, observations, etc., memories, things I, you know, quotes, things I want to like jot down, etc. Like there will be a lot of different reasons for me using this book. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, this I'm using to prop it up is actually how I make some of the rounded corners is with this tool and it cost, I would say between five and $10. And yes, my chair is creaking. I apologize for that. I was trying to avoid the creaking noise today, but apparently that won't happen. Let's move these out of the way. And so what I did, I believe anyway, is that the front, the spine, and the back of a book is just as important as any other part of it. So when I decorate these, what I did for this one as a base, like the base to me is the cover, the back, and the spine. So some people will actually create it out of cardboard, um, folders, paper. I mean, I've seen them created out of some things. I'm like, really? That was the best solution? Um, but whatever gets people creative, honestly, that's more so what I'm into. But what I did is I used an old romance book. Um, this book I actually got for free. So if you go to your library, usually they have books that they're discarding, you can go to the discard pile of books and take whatever books you want. And I actually use some of the pictures and things from those books in some of my lookbooks. Now, the thing to know about me is I'm relatively minimalist. I am not a complete minimalist. I'm a reseller, so you can't be. But I would definitely be considered a very contained type of um, minimalist. So when I go, I don't go there and rob the entire free book, discarded book area. I give myself a limit of two or three books. And usually what we end up doing also is giving them books. So like we're taking books, but we're giving books. So then there's a balance. So your house isn't like full or your rooms or whatever it is you use are not just full and overflowing with things. So this came from an old romance book. And one of the reasons that I chose this book is it had really interesting and pretty wording like this. And so I was able to cut this out and I have some of the cutouts I'm using in other books and every um, cutout has like this beautiful decorative element on it that you could tint, you can color, you can whatever, leave it as is. Um, you could, you know, do whatever you want. But this is what I did is I endless songs, which is so befitting of a former rock R&B pop star, if you will. And so I actually used that here, and this was chapter 24. But I also used the actual book. Um, so what I had to do is clean out all the guts of the book. I had to shore up the spine and also just do any cosmetic work that I wanted to the outside and the inside of the covers. And then I had a base to work from. So that's how I ended And So this is a very hardcover book. It's not going anywhere unless it's fire or water damage. So one of the things I did is I created this, um, what they call a tag, but to me it's really more like a bookmark. And I added or created this button rattle. So this is created out of a variety of different color buttons. And yes, you will see some cult rock buttons or cult buttons in there as well as beads and this um 
like leathery type of hemp material and so you have some fun noise but you also have cool words and so what happens is as you're going through you want to mark your place bam there you go you're all set fancy tag so that's we'll leave that there and what I did to just hold the book together this is not necessary the ribbon but as this book grows fatter with memories which is a good fatness I want to just know that you could tie it and everything is secure. So I put this, um, I almost want to call it a brocade ribbon. I don't know if that's really the right term, but it's embroidered gold ribbon with the black, obviously. And what I did is I used some glue and I also sewed it into the spine so it's not going anywhere so you don't have to sit there saying where's a ribbon it's attached it's not going anywhere and just to show you what this spine looks like yes I do like the look of the exposed thread out here um, one of the things I am going to do though because I've done this with other books that I created after this one is I am going to mod podge over this because then it has no movement and it just makes the string or the thread stronger I used embroidery thread um, six strands per like sewing whole you know whatever you want to call this and there is one, two, three, four, five, six signatures in this book. So, and what I did also is I just thought it would be funny to put this ad from a rock magazine upside down versus having it just be the classic way of right side up. I do stuff like that. It just makes it, I think, a little more creative. And my daughter created a series of these cutouts. I think she now has maybe like 40 different cutouts that she created. So cool. So cool, you guys. Um, and this is like the, her first endeavor. And now they've just gotten like better and better as she's continued to create them. So I have been using them in almost all of my books. Here is the rock god himself. Why is the letter P there? Guess why? These are wood cutouts. This is balsa wood. And this is actually from an old fan I had from, I think it dated back to 1950. And I never knew what to do with this fan. It's in my fan collection. And I know some people have requested um, more information in regards to what is in my dressing room after seeing the tour. And that is definitely coming. I will show you some of my collections. And just to let you know, that is inspired by the closet historian herself as well as Rebecca Fashions. So thank you to those two ladies for the inspiration. But um, I do have some old fans of my collection and this fan in particular was rather crispy, I guess I'll say. It was when I got it, but more so over time and I never really used it because it had breaks and cracks or whatever. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to use that fan, break it up and use it in some of my books. So that's what I did. And there's other things here, stickers, things from newspapers. This is actually from a bunch of, um, you would buy the star stickers and this metallic um, backing. And this is the backing that the stickers were on. And I just thought, wow, what a cool element. I do not have to like throw that away. I have something I can use it for. So opening the book, what we have is this big belly band that goes from top to bottom and as you can see it has little treats in it I made this little flip through notebook um, so that you know no I will be using this book it's my personal book so I will be making little notes on there etc or in there here I have like this greeting card that my husband got me that is highly highly hilarious and look at the rainbow where it's coming from my husband is so funny sometimes and then here I have and I say sometimes because most people think he's always serious but it's like no sometimes he's super funny 
Um, the corners I cut with decorative scissors. I love this paper. And one of the things I did in this book is I tried to have a theme where I repeated some of the pattern. So you will see that. And then here, there he is in all of his glorious, gloriousness. And on the back here, I actually created what I called a picture frame out of this envelope. I was going to color the envelope because a lot of people will use this inking stuff that they put all over everything. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, you don't have to put that inking stuff on everything. And everyone knows it's not old. It's not antique because you use the same brown ink on everything. But I wanted it sort of to be white until I decided what picture. So this is meant to be a picture holder. So I will put a picture in here. Um, and this is simply made out of an envelope that had a really large window on it. And you can see I added more ribbon here as an accent. And some of the pages are empty, so I'm not going to go through all the empty pages. But I also not only used regular note paper, I used an old calendar um, that we never used. And I was going to throw it away, but it had some really cool pictures I could use for something else. And I was like, I could use a calendar for this. And with the calendar pages, you just write on the calendar pages, just write over anything that's here, draw pictures, paste things, whatever it is you want to do. And obviously there's also white paper that you can do the same. And yes, the sexiest man here, I butterfly Cadillac to tab so that, you know, versus just having a tab in a regular place. And also I use decorative scissors here on this edge. Here we have a couple playing cards, right on the cards, leave the cards as they are, color in the joker, it, it's up to you. And then here I have a tuck area, um, and it's just the way that you put this paper down that allows you to tuck things in so that they don't fall out. This is a picture from one of our adventures, and on that same adventure, different day, obviously. Look at that rainbow. Absolutely stunning. Our daughter took these pictures. And what I did do with these pictures is I did use my cutter on the edge just to round the edges out. Um, so, yeah, you could do whatever you want with your stuff. And here, did you, get, did you see that? Yes. You have this beautiful pop-up, which is sort of a version of a, a Greek matte fold. There's different versions of that fold. And this is what I decided to do is something that's more basic. But what I did do is go overboard because I put cutouts, which I made myself. I hand cut these out so that there would be some decoration to this. And what you do with this, you just write on it, write on it, paste, tape things on it whatever you want. You have white areas here as well that you could do the same. And the whole idea is when you open and close a page every single time, one million times, it should all automatically have folded correctly Do in, in, and if it's glued in correctly, it should just pop out just like that. So I just think that's so much fun. And then here I have a little, what they call hidden note area. And here I do have some inspirational words because you are amazing. But here, all you do, you could write here, you could write on this part. Um, obviously, you could write on this if you want to. More inspirational words. Here is a beautiful pocket, which I created out of a picture that I cut out of a book. Um, and what I did with this is created not only a really large pocket, but I, you know, have some, this is like very hard, the board that I put in there so that I'm able to like, if I wanted to almost use this like a bulletin board in a way, but the thing is I have to be sure that I don't like go through to this picture. So you would want to use brads um, to hold things on if you decide to stick holes through the side and hold things on that way. And brads, we could talk about in the future video. And you all know what they are. You probably just didn't know that's what they're called. And here is a card that, it, which is from a museum that we visited. We go to a lot, like the bit largest museums in the world. We like visiting. This one is um, actually a, more of a medium-sized museum. It's a Wad, Wadsworth Anthenium. What I did is I also put this 
here. I cut this out uh, from a card, actually, and uh, an old greeting card. And I actually used a piece of washi tape on it. And I have the sticker that says Vision. And that just sticks in there. And here, very interesting, I have some old stock um, report paper. So this is actually dated, which I think you can see. Let's see if I can make that larger for you. It's dated 1966. So in my books, I like a using like actual ephemera versus like cutting stuff out and making quote unquote fake or faux ephemera. Um, what is real ephemera? Greeting cards, old maps old pages from books, like the things you're seeing in here, this old 1966 stock report um, from a stock report book. And so what I did is simply like took some of the pages out and I did highlight some of the pages. And what I did is simply highlighted the companies that I recognized, like this is PetsuCo, um, this is JCPenney, there's like, I was surprised by how many of these companies still exist. Um, Owens Corning, and it goes on and on and on. And I, I did not know that o Owens Corning actually eventually owned Federal Glass Company. Um, and then there's fiber, fiberglass, something in there, which is part of Owens, Owens Corning as well. So there were a lot of companies in there I recognized. So just to make it more interesting, I highlighted the date once in a while and I highlighted the name of some of the companies here. There he is again. So yes, even though this book is dedicated to prints, I didn't like make it a prints scrapbook. You know, there's you know, some of my favorite Prince pictures, and this is one of, one of many <laughs> of the hundreds of my favorite Prince songs, um, I Would Die For You, which I cut out of a rock and roll magazine. I highlighted, and look, some of those stars, I put those around there with some ribbon on this piece that has a bunch of musical notes and G clefs and such on it, and lots of really nice, um, paper. And the paper has different thicknesses, so it's not all, you know, hard card stock or super soft paper. Like, it has a variety of textures and thicknesses to it. And then here is an envelope that I actually made myself. So I actually folded this from the paper and created this envelope. And this is from a book that I recycled, and so I just um, mod podged pieces of different pages there and I wanted it left rough like this. This is from sewing in the binding and then here I noticed this paper as I told you is a theme, a little bit of a theme and you have this nice big roomy pocket to put things in and on the back it does say England so hello to my UK friends and as I go through this I'll just tell you some of the places I think are best to find items for books like this are number one, look at your own items, your kids' items, your family's items, etc., versus like going out buying stuff and making all this stuff. And then that stuff that people are making, it's not, it's brand new stuff, even though they're putting the same ink or coffee or tea stains on it to try to make it look older. It's not, it's brand new. And also, you can look at um, tag sales, flea markets, charity sales, charity shops, um, thrift shops, boots, car boot sales. I'm trying to use some of the terms that my folks in the United Kingdom, Ireland, Scotland, um, France use as well, etc. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there and you don't have to pay very much or even anything in some cases. And here, this is just a frame so that you could stick a picture in there. And I actually cut this out of, um, from a greeting card, the border. I love this paper. It's so pretty. So interesting to look at, which is why I also think it's important to use a variety of papers, different sizes of papers versus making everything one consistent size. I mean, a true junk journal, if that's what 
some people are making, it wouldn't look like that. Um, so you, I think the more, um, look, Polaroid, Pennzoil <laughs> companies that are still around, and that's Mob Mobile Oil Company. So we have those pages. But yeah, I, I just, the more interesting to me, the better. And it, they don't have to also, they don't have to be overstuffed with everything but the kitchen sink and the dog and the kitten added in. You know, sometimes a little minimalism goes a longer way. Um, here, this is actually cut out of a R&B magazine, which is Rhythm and Blues Music. And this was never filled in, so I thought that would be fun to have in here. And yes, my friends or my daughter and um, probably, actually, I think I'll use this with my daughter and my husband is we'll fill this in with, you know, who we think our favorite artists are, especially nowadays. Um, and here I created another notebook. And this one says classifieds. I did a fancy scissor cut on it. And I actually glued it in to the book. And you have this little cute turtle poking out because I love turtles. And this whole area is just created almost like a, I call these bulletin boards, so almost like a bulletin board area. So this bulletin board area, similar to this area, except this one is just a bulletin board. There's no pocket on the other side. And then here we have him in all of his princely glory. Notice a repeat of that ribbon. And here I have a little bit of technology because Prince was actually a forerunner when it came to music technology. He was the one who stated that music would go to the internet and he fought it for many, many years. And then he was the first to actually have a website, actually him and David Bowie. David Bowie actually was the first, first, first to have a website where he actually interacted with his fans online. Prince was the first to actually sell music and such in an electronic format online, as well as other like musical pioneering things he did with the internet, as well as, you know, all the other worlds uh, in little tiny like hovels and holes and giant stages of music. He was truly gifted. So that's why I sort of did that as a little homage to him. And then what else do we have in this section? We have this area where I have a belly band and belly bands can be put in any way you want. They could be put in diagonal, straight, you know, vertical, horizontal, whatever, in corners, you name it. And this has a card um, with sentiments, compliments of Maya Angelou. And what I did is just decorative cuts on the corner, but this also has a pocket here. And I just like the sound of tissue paper, so I tucked a bit in there, glued it in, love. And then here we have an envelope, so we have another area pocket, and decorated that. And I wanted to sort of do that in a way that, like, me as a teenage girl would do it. And then here we have maps, so yes, folks, people do stick maps in here. And here what we have is another nice pocket, and I actually had a cutout in it. And this is the um, day that J Prince was born, if you think about when doves cry. <laughs> and here is some lace, CBGB, which is or was a rock club that actually got the careers going of Iggy Pop, the Ramones, Blondie, and many, many others in New York. Um, and here I just love this old, um, airmail envelope from the military and it has all the original stamps on it. And this is from a magazine as well. And what else do, oh, let's not forget this fold out of a full purple motorcycle. So, yep, I really decorated that up with the use two different types of scissors to like do the borders. Once again, more cutout things are in here. 
And then what else do we have on this side? We have more of the map, more pretty paper. I'm not trying to show you like all of the paper, but this paper is pretty outstanding. We could like look at it for a while. Here, I love this area as well. It's um, when back in the day, like the 1950s, when you had your photographs develop, you would get this little snapshot um, envelope with them in it. And so I actually created a pocket out of it. This is actually from an, a clothes, some sort of denim clothing that we purchased at some point. And, but I thought that made a really cool tag, but then you fold it down and you have this secret note area. So I was really happy with my, and look, ribbon, happy with myself about that. And then here, like I told you, belly band, ambassador limousine, you stick your card or whatever right there in the side. It's not going anywhere. And then we have this back cover that has a belly band here at the top. So you could stick, you know, things in there. And then here we have this area, which is an envelope. You could write in it. You could write on it. Um, you just need silver or metallic markers to write on black. I just think this envelope is so cool. It's from something that our daughter had, a set of, famous. And then here is our business card. And then if you look at the back of the book, voila, and that is it. So thank you guys for tuning in. Remember that your health is your wealth and without your health you have absolutely nothing. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for tuning in again.